Jim, for that reading. By the way, you sound like a preacher. Amen, amen. Well, very quickly, church, what I would like to do this morning, I would, I would like to talk to you um, on the subject, um, live less rather than stress. So everyone here this morning would like to live a life that is blessed rather than live on the stress of everyday life. So let me begin today's message by saying it might seem easier to return to a place of spiritual bondage, but we will never move toward the blessing of God by returning to captivity and our old way of life. The Bible says that God, through his son Jesus Christ, took us out of darkness and brought us into his marvelous light. So God, through his divine providence, took you out of bondage. And God wants to bless you this morning. And God wants to fulfill every promise and purpose for your life. But there are conditions that we have to meet before we can receive the blessing of God. God had told the people of Israel to move forward and not backward. Tell your neighbor that God wants you to move forward and not backward. Tell the person sitting next to you that God wants you to move forward and not backward. There is a problem with this text. The people of Israel, God has promised them through his servant, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, I'm going to give you a land that is called the promised land. The land that is filled with milk and honey. But the folks, they will still contemplating on going back to Egypt. But God was trying to move them forward, and in their mind, they were focusing on their old way of life. And today, God wants to bless his church. He wants us to move forward and not backward. Today, I want to share that God's plan for you is to live a blessed life rather than a stressed life. God wants to bless you, church. God's power has no obstacle. So anytime we experience difficulties, faith in God is the only thing required of us. As every time you experience difficulty, what is required of you is one thing, and that is faith in God. Faith in God. I can share with you a little story about how we got here to this new location, church. I remember this year I was going through my boats last night, I think around 12 midnight, and I was thinking about the goodness of God for this church. And God told me this year, I think around February, he said, son, I'm going to give you a new place that will be close to your home. And when God gave me that message, I look at the church bank account, and in my mind, I said, this is not possible. But God told me, he said, I'm going to give you a new place. And during that time, the church has asked me to start looking for a new location. Lo and behold, in March, we talked to our landlord for this new place. And the landlord approved us for this new building. And every pastor that I talk to, my friends, my colleagues, they keep telling me, how in the world did you get this place? But it is because of the goodness of God. Amen. I say it is because of the goodness of God and because of your faithfulness. The Bible says God is faithful to all people and his mercy endureth to all generations. This church has been faithful to God. And we saw the faithfulness of God yesterday during our fundraiser event. Like the people of Israel, centuries ago, many believers today walk by sight and not by faith. Therefore, they fail to enjoy the good things God has for them. Too many folks, believers, they are walking by sight and not by faith. But God has called his church to walk by faith and not by sight. Say walk by faith 
and not by sight. One of the main reasons many Christians are not living a blessed life today, church, is because they doubt the word of God and begin to walk by sight instead of walking by faith. So my challenge to you this morning, people of God, I want you to begin to start to walk by faith and not by sight. The word of God said in Luke 137, the angel Gabriel told Mary that with God, nothing is impossible. The God that we serve is the God of impossibilities. So keep that in mind. This God that we serve, he is the God of impossibilities. And we see this among the ten spies who returned to provide Moses, the servant of God, with a comprehensive review of the land God has ordained for the people of Israel. The spies reported that all the people were of great size in the land and belittled themselves as small grasshoppers. They looked at the land, at the land and they were afraid, and they look at themselves as small grasshoppers. What is sad about this account, church, is that the ten spies saw themselves as victims rather than as victorious people of God. We are victors and not the victims. The church is victorious. In our text for today, God told the Israelites, that the promised land was rich and fertile and filled with milk and honey. And by the way, church, milk and honey is a common phrase emphasizing the fruitfulness of the promised land. This land was so fruitful. And God, in all his power, in all his glory, described the land as milk and honey. However, after the spies came back and looked at the promised land, also called the land of Cana, it was so magnificent. And the Bible says the land was filled with milk and honey. And this was the land that God has promised to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob. One thing about God, church, the God that you serve, he is a confident keeping God. God always keep his promise. I said God always keep his promise. And there are some folks here today who God has spoken to about his promise. And you are still waiting and contemplating on when God is going to fulfill his promise for your life. My advice to you is to wait on the Lord. Wait on God. Wait on the Lord. God is going to bring every word that he spoke into your life into pass. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Everything God has said hundred of years before it took place was true. And we have a God we can trust because according to Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday Today and forever. Amen. This verse demonstrates the immutability of God. And this verse is also a reminder that Christians can trust in God's promises to save them, to provide for them, to bless them, and enable them to persevere to the end. This is a promise from God. Church leaders like myself may come and go, but Jesus Christ remains the same, and Christ is the center of our faith. Let me say that one more time. I said, church leaders like myself, we are going to come and go. But Jesus Christ is the same, and Christ should be the center of your faith this morning. 
Let me tell you a story about a pastor. A pastor announced his retirement from a local church that he had pastored for several years. And you know how members get so attached to pastors because they look up to the pastor for spiritual food. One of the members said to the pastor, he said, I don't see how I'm going to make it without you. I depend on you so much for spiritual help and growth. The reply from this pastor shocked the member. The pastor said to the member, he said, the sooner I leave this church, the sooner you can start depending on God. He said, build your life on Jesus Christ. He never changes. Dear people, I'm going to ask you to build your life on Jesus Christ. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't build your life around Pastor Elijah. Build your life around Jesus Christ. He never changes. The ten spies fail to build their lives on the promises of God and their report begin with a glorious description of the promised land. But their attitude changed after focusing on the obstacle between them and their new life. I noticed since we moved to this new building, some of our members changed because of the new place, because of new people coming to the church. They see this new place as an obstacle. But God wants to take us from grace to grace, from strength to strength, from power to power, as our faith Rest in the living word of God. The ten spies fail to recognize God's power to overcome powerful enemies. No matter how great, because of their lack of faith in God, they wander in the wilderness for more than 40 years. Because of your lack of faith in God, God is going to hold up your blessing. If you want God to bless you, you need to release your faith in God. You need to take your eyes off life obstacles and keep your eyes on God, whose power is sufficient for difficulties that you faced. God has already given the people of Asia the land, and I commanded them to go and take it. God had promised them victory, so they had to trust and obey. And today... God has promised you victory. Your job, church, is to trust and obey. Trust and obey. Because of lack of faith, all the spies, except two persons, Caleb and Joshua, were discouraged from entering the promised land and fighting the enemy. Their discouragement quickly spread throughout the camp of Israel. The doubt of the spouse had turned into unbelief, and unbelief is rebellion against God. Every time you doubt the word of God, it is unbelief. Unbelief is a serious challenge because it puts God's character on the line, and when we doubt God, we rebel against God. We see this in the nation of Israel, God, mighty movement at the Red Sea. Each day has God fed them, rested them over the holies of holies, and met Moses at the tent of the tabernacle. But when it came to dealing with giants, the people resisted God's command. When it came to dealing with giants, they resisted God's command. They were provided every reason to trust God because of his word and magnificent miracles. But they did not choose faith. This led to more stress than rest. Every time you begin to doubt the word of God is going to lead to more stress than rest for your life. Joshua and Caleb believed God to bless the people of Israel 
and take away their stress. So the problem was not for them to resolve, and the problem we face daily is not our responsibility to resolve. It is God's job to resolve our problem that we face every day. Joshua and Caleb saw themselves as participants in God's resolution of the issue and their conviction concerning God's promises were more significant than their fears. There are three things today we can learn from the people of Israel very quickly. The first one, church, is God is true to his word. I said God is true to his word. Let me explain this a little bit further. Everything the Lord said about the promised land was confirmed. God said 800 years earlier, so let us not rely on man's philosophy or human ability, but on God's war as the only and most accurate source of truth. God's war is the only and most accurate source of truth. The Bible says in Romans, let God be true and let every man be a liar. The second essential principle is God empowers us to overcome obstacles. God has empowered this church to overcome every obstacles that we are going to face tomorrow. Yesterday, we overcame our obstacles to raise the amount of $3,000. That was an obstacle. But God gave us the strength to overcome yesterday's obstacle. The ten spies focus on the problem they saw in the land rather than the possibilities. You need to focus on what God is telling you and don't focus on the problem. The third essential truth we can learn today is the Lord God is faithful never to leave us, none forsake us. God will never leave you, none forsake you. Even in the midst of your storm, even in the midst of chaos, the Lord God will never leave you, none forsake you. If we find favors in God's sight, church, he will bless us. So let us not prevent the goodness and the and blessing of God. One of the ways we stop God's blessing is by disobeying God and by disrespecting God's authority. The, bigger, the biggest fight any believer here today and those that are watching may face in this life is the fight of faith. That is the biggest fight you are going to face in your life is the fight of faith. We are living in a world that is in the power of the evil one. So obstacles are expected in the world that we live in today. You are going to experience problems every day. Yes. Christians must put their energy into learning God's instruction because God's promises to bless us. So let us allow God to achieve his purpose in our lives. As James outlined in James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4, when we face a trial, we need to run fast. I said we need to run fast to faith in God. When you face an obstacle, you need to run fast to faith in God. Run fast to faith in God. When you face a trial, God has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness according to his word in, first, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. All things that pertains to life and godliness, God has given it to his church according to his word. God's divine power is an inexhaustible resource that gives believers everything they need for an obedient, godly, and abundant life. Jesus said, 
I came to give you life, and not just life, but life more abundantly. God is calling his church and his people yeah. to abundant life. Yeah. Yeah. A life that is full of milk and honey. Amen. The Bible, church, is a toolkit. This Bible is a toolkit. In a repository, a storehouse of God's precious promises and glorious life of faith. The word of God will transform you, church, if you access it daily and study it very closely. If you're looking for transformation, look to God. The word of God transforms so many people. And the word of God is still transforming a lot of folks today. Yes. One of the um, gentlemen who came to our church yesterday, he said, Pastor, you got a lot of crazy people in your church. People who are crazy for Jesus. Yeah. Crazy for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he said yesterday. Yeah. He said, I admire your folks. They are crazy for Jesus. Crazy for the Lord. And that's the same description Peter and the folks on the day of Pentecost, they call them crazy people because they love the Lord. They love Jesus Christ. And this church love the Lord. We are on fire for Jesus. We are on fire for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Call us crazy. Mm -hmm. And by the way, church, and by the way, church, and if you want God to bless you, the Bible, which is the word of God, should not be a mile from distance. Let me say that one more time. You cannot admire the Bible from a distance. Because you know what? Our God is not a long distant God. God is not looking for a long distant relationship. What God is seeking from you and I this morning is an intimate personal relationship with him. If you are dating a woman, you want to be close to her. There is nothing called long distant love. It has to be intimate. It has to be personal. That's what God is looking for this morning from you and I. He is not a long distant God. So you cannot admire the God that we serve from a long distance. You need to admire God from a close distance. Can I get an amen? amen? So church, we must also remember that the world is a world of life and not just knowledge. The result that we grow spiritually and make room for fruit of the Spirit as a result of the trials God blesses us to endure. Yes. This entire process produces joy in the life of the believer rather than stress and blesses us to live as overcomers rather than underachievers. God is calling his church to live as overcomers rather than underachievers. We are overcomers. I said the church, we are overcomers and not underachievers. I'm going to wrap it up very quickly because we got a meeting today. Let me give you very quickly a, a, an, an, an illustration and then we're going to close for today's message. Many years ago, the New Orleans Saints made it to the Super Bowl several years ago. No one in the red mind thought they had a chance to win the Super Bowl. No one in their red mind. They fought their way through the game and were close to the half. When the team came up on the second half of the game, the coach of New Orleans called an onside kick, which they recovered very quickly. From then, the New Orleans Saints were on their way to win 
to winning the first ever Super Bowl championship. All of this took place after Hurricane Katrina had destroyed New Orleans. For us Christians, before God blesses us and take away our stress, he pulled us through a terrible storm before he blesses us. I say before God blesses you, God is going to pull you through a terrible storm. Too often, church, we let intimidation control our mind and control our faith rather than the other way around. The only fight we have is the fight of faith. I say the only fight we have this morning is the fight of faith. Is God's war faithful? Can God do the impossible? You are right. All the response to this question is yes, God's war is faithful and God can do the impossible. The answer to all these questions is yes. So we must put our faith to work. This is where we learn who God is and live more in the fruit of the spirit than the weakness of the flesh. So to drive this message home, I will close with the priestly blessing in Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 to verse 26. This is the most talk about priestly blessing in the Bible. The priest will give them the privilege of serving at the altar and ministering in the sanctuary, but they were also allowed to bless God's people in the name of the Lord. And today, I am allowed to bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. God instructed his servant Moses to tell Aaron, the high priest, to bless the people of Israel by saying, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This is the priestly blessing. We use this blessing today. For it belongs to us and to the people of Israel. The church has been blessed with every spiritual blessing through the Lord Jesus Christ according to Ephesians 1 verse 3. And we can claim this blessing through Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, church. Amen. Claim that blessing. Amen. Claim it through Jesus Christ. Very quickly, we'll do our altar call. Is there anyone here today who would like to come forward to accept Jesus as their Lord and their Savior? Is there anyone? There is no one. All right, we're going to serve you, come in very quickly. But before we do that, let me share with you.